How long is the 2022 recession going to last? I have those details for you right here in the video, so let's get right into it. All right, now this is a very common question as many people are wondering, how long is this recession going to last? Well, those are the details that I wanna discuss with you right here in the video, but of course, I cannot tell you exactly how many days this recession is going to last simply because nobody knows quite yet. However, I can talk you through all the details as far as giving a range and a timeline based on history and all of the other recessions we've gone through right here in the United States over many, many decades. Now, this paints a pretty good picture and gives us a pretty good idea of how long we may be in this economic contraction. So let's get into it and discuss all those details. But first off, you might be wondering, what is the actual definition of a recession? Let me quickly tell you what that is. It simply comes down to negative GDP growth or contraction in GDP for two quarters in a row. That's it. That's all what a recession is. So now that we understand the basic definition of a recession, let's quickly talk through the range and the timeline of how long we could be seeing a recession in the United States. One other quick side note, the National Bureau of Economic Research is the authority who typically officiates the starting and the ending of an official recession. So this is the authority that actually comes out and says, it's official, we are now in a recession. So of course, we'll have to wait for them and they will actually be the ones to to tell us exactly how many days this is. So, of course, I'll keep an eye on that and I'll give you those details as we get that information. However, now let's quickly talk about a range as far as typical recessions. Now, of course, just with like with everything, as we look at just about anything out there, whether it's a recession or a bear market, a bull market, it doesn't really matter what it happens to be, literally everything, there's always outliers, right? There's always the outliers that are much longer and the outliers that are much shorter. So, Again, that's why I'm giving a range based on the average recession uh, kind of excluding some of the outliers because realistically, the recession that we saw back in early 2020, just a couple years ago, was very short-lived. It was only two quarters long. So it was very, very short, right? We were in and we were out and we were off to the races once again. So that was a very, very short recession, right? And then of course, we've also seen recessions much, much longer over long, long periods of time. So again, kind of excluding some of these outliers, let's talk about the typical range. So here's what it comes down to. The typical recession lasts anywhere between about 11 and 18 months. So that's what it comes down to is about a year, just shy of a year's time out to about a year and a half. Now this is the typical recession time. So kind of interesting to see how this is all playing out. One other thing that I want to point out for you as well, we need to watch the stock market as we go into this. Now, again, I know that there's some varying opinions on stocks and investing and stuff like this. However, I can't tell you this much. The stock market is a leading indicator for the economy. The stock market leads the way, right? It's like a train. It's, it's the engine at the beginning of the train and the rest of the economy, everything else follows behind. So if we watch the stock market and see where does the market bottom and where does it go, we can anticipate where the economy is going to go shortly thereafter. The next quarter, maybe two quarters out, things like that. So a lot of it's going to come down to a few different factors right now because this is a very interesting recession slash bear market that we are in right here right now because it's a manufactured bear market. It's a manufactured recession out of the Federal Reserve as an effort to actually bring down some of this inflation. So that's the whole reason behind this is the Federal Reserve is manufacturing this one by jacking up interest rates very aggressively, bringing in a recession with an effort to actually lower some of this inflation. So again, a lot of this is also going to be tied to the Federal Reserve's policies. If they come in and reverse policy, as in maybe they pause and or they once again start up quantitative easing, they start printing money and they reverse rates, well, guess what happens? The reverse, uh, the recession is going to be much shorter lived than if it's actually a natural recession, whereas they just kind of let the markets do their own thing. They, they let the economy go through the natural uh, economic cycles. In that case, it's just like the seasons, right? It's like the seasons that we all kind of uh, live through on a, in an annualized basis, right? The seasons are all generally, you know, they come and they go, but they're sometimes a little bit longer and shorter. Sometimes winter comes in and it's a really long, deep winter. Sometimes winter comes in and it's like, hey, what happened? We're already out of winter and it's already nice out again, right? So again, same thing comes in with business cycles and economic cycles. Some are really long and drawn out. Some are really short. We barely dip in and then we're out of it once again, just like what I mentioned a minute ago back in early 2020 when we were in a recession for just a couple quarters 
and then there we go. We were out of it right away. So a couple things that we need to watch here going forward. Number one is, of course, the Federal Reserve. They are the ones that are coming forward with all this, with their policies, jacking up interest rates, bringing in this recession. So it's again, we'll have to watch the Federal Reserve because they could pull us out of something really quickly if they wanted to. How? They simply just fire up the printing presses, print a whole bunch of money, and then boom, we're out of it once again. Not a big deal. They could do it if they just so wanted to. But again, that would just lead to even more inflation, which is what they're trying to actually slow down right now. So another thing we need to take into consideration too is how long is it going to take for the Federal Reserve to actually achieve their policies and their efforts, which is to bring inflation back down to 2%. Uh, as I've been saying a while for uh, in some of my other videos, good luck, Federal Reserve. It's going to take a very long time and it is going to cause some massive, massive economic pain if they actually do get inflation down to 2%. In my honest opinion, again, I don't like to throw my opinions into these videos all that much, but I'm just going to throw this one out there. Just a quick little flyer and we'll have to refer back to this video here at some point in the future and see if I'm actually right about this. Here's what I anticipate happening. The Federal Reserve is going to continue aggressively raising interest rates collapsing the economy, putting us into a recession, all kinds of business like this. And eventually they're going to lower inflation by maybe a couple percentage points, maybe topsies. And then they're going to realize uh, this wasn't a good idea. And they're going to reverse policy before they hit their target of 2% inflation. There's just no way. We are so far away from 2% inflation right now. It's going to be a long, uh, ugly road if we have to go down this and actually uh, continue working toward 2% inflation. It's going to be a long, drawn-out process, and it's going to be pretty painful along the way economically. So I don't foresee them doing that just because the pain is going to be way worse than the actual gain from it. You know what I mean? So that's why I don't foresee them doing it. I foresee them co continuing on a little bit further and then finally just coming out and just reversing because they're saying, no, no, it's just not worth the economic pain. We just cannot do it anymore. We'll, we'll deal with the inflation. You know what I mean? So uh, that's just what I foresee. But again, I could be totally right. I could be totally wrong. Only time will tell. And maybe we'll refer back to this video here in a few months from now and see what actually happens. But when it comes down to this recession, one other thing that I want to point out for you as well, a couple different uh, differences here as well. This is kind of interesting because sometimes when we look at a recession, sometimes they look at it as the beginning of the first quarter of economic growth. In this case, it would be January, uh, early January, January 1st of 2022. That was technically the first day of Q1 of 2022. Well, we already know that the GDP in the first quarter of 2022 was already negative. We already know that, right? So that was the first uh, kind of reading in the book that we got. Now, again, once we get GDP, um, you know, the GDP numbers for Q2 of 2022, sometimes, again, it kind of varies on who you ask and who actually looks at the uh, recession indicators, things like that. But sometimes they identify the start of the recession as the first day of the first quarter that was negative. So that would have been January 1st of 2022. And sometimes they look at the start of the recession being the last day of the second quarter that had negative GDP growth. So again, this is a difference of six months. Well, if we look at this, uh, the differences here, um, in this case, we could already be in a recession for six months now. But again, if we're looking at the secondary reading of how they sometimes look at recessions, we may not be in a recession yet because it hasn't been, um, well, it could be right now because we're beyond the, 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 the last day of the second quarter. Does that make sense? So again, it's a huge range here that we also need to take into consideration as well is because it kind of depends on who you ask, depends on the, uh, the economists that you ask as far as uh, who's looking at defining the recession. So again, this also plays into the ranges that I gave you earlier. So maybe when we look at it, maybe the real range on, an, uh, on a recession is maybe anywhere between about six months and about 12 months. But again, kind of depends on who you ask and which economists are looking at this and as far as when they actually identify when the recession actually begins and ends. Does that kind of make sense? So just like with everything, everybody has their own varying opinions. Everybody has their own way of looking at different things, of assessing the recession and, and everything else. So that's just another factor that I wanted to take into consideration. But the fact of the matter is, it's not over yet. We do know that much. It's likely historically going to go on for probably a bit longer. Could it be another five months? It could be. Could it be another 12 months? It absolutely could be. Could it be even longer? Yes. And could it be shorter? Yep. It could be shorter as well. Again, what else I want to point out for you? Like I said earlier, 
we need to watch the Federal Reserve very closely going forward because a simple shift in their policies, going from quantitative tightening and aggressively raising rates to all of a sudden flipping and or pausing and uh, cutting rates and once again, quantitative easing, that's gonna play a huge role in how long a recession will actually last. Make sense? So again, the Federal Reserve pretty much has the magical wand right now as far as how long a recession is going to last, how deep it's going to be, how aggressive it's going to be, how long and prolonged an economic contraction will be. The Federal Reserve has that wand. They can wave it at any point that they want and they can pretty much say, it's game on, recession, we're gonna take this thing down, or they can wave it and say, just kidding, <laughs> we just wanted to test everyone, just kidding, just kidding, let's just be fine with all this inflation and um, you know, we're gonna reverse policy and we're gonna go right back at it and uh, all will be fine and dandy. So again, we'll have to watch the Federal Reserve very, very closely, as I mentioned in previous videos, because this is kind of an interesting uh, time that we're in right now because this recession that we are going into is a manufactured recession by the Federal Reserve, whereas a lot of other times that we've gone into recessions, it's because of economic factors that are actually pushing the economy into a recession at that point, rather than the Federal Reserve basically coming out and pushing us into recession based on policy. Make sense? So anyway, um, hope this video kind of gives you a better glimpse into a recession as well as how long this may be lasting. All that we know is that there will be further economic contraction. How big is it going to be? How deep is it going to be? How long prolonged is it going to be? All of these questions and answers are still up in the air right now, but we should be getting more direction here um, as we do get the next Federal Reserve meeting, the FOMC meeting, and what they decide to do with rates going forward. I've already seen some talk out there that they may be raising rates by 100 basis points, 1%. That'd be a huge raise possibly historic. So anyway, of course, I'll keep you posted. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out some of the other thousands of videos right here on the channel. Until next time, have a good one. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you again